Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made a winter version of the sheared top that I made on my channel back last summer. If you saw that video, I made this top in a floral print and also in a white cotton, and I really enjoyed making that project and wearing those shirts during the summer. So I thought it would be fun to have something kind of similar, but in more of a winter type of material. So today I am making this top that is made out of this beautiful rayon silk velvet that I found from fabric.com and I made a few alterations to this one from the original shirt that I shared last summer that we'll go over in the video but it has the same type of smocking on the bodice but this time it has these long floaty balloon sleeves which I think are so fun and look really pretty in this velvet fabric. I took a little bit of inspiration from a shirt that I saw at Reformation but kind of changed it up a little bit as well so I'll pop a picture here of the inspiration image but I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and show you guys how I made this and I hope you enjoy watching. The fabric I've chosen for this project is this beautiful rose colored silk velvet from fabric.com. Then for the sleeve pattern, I'm going to be using the long sleeve from McCall's number 8034, which is a dress pattern I've worked with before. And then for the bodice pieces, I'm using the pattern that I drafted in my original sheared top video. So if you want a tutorial on the full pattern making process, go over to that video and I will walk you through it over there. And you would also be able to use the same sleeve pattern that I drafted over there, just extend the length and making it a long sleeve instead of a short sleeve but because I had this one ready to go I just decided to use the McCall's pattern so I'm cutting out my bodice pieces here and you'll notice I extended the length just a little bit because I wanted this shirt to be a little bit longer than my original sheared blouse so I'm going to cut out two of the bodice pieces making sure that both of the pieces are going the same direction on the fabric with velvet you want to be really careful that all of your pieces are going in the same direction otherwise they will look like different colors then all that's left to cut out are the sleeves. So I am using the McCall's pattern here and you'll notice mine is in two pieces. That's just because the last time I made it, I made it with the upper sleeve version, but if you just cut it out from the pattern, it will be one piece. So I'm cutting out two sleeves here. So the first step to putting this blouse together is to hem the top of the bodice pieces. So I'm going to use my serger to finish off the edge of both of the blouse pieces. And then I'm going to fold that serging under, it's about a quarter of an inch that I'm doing for my hem, and then just top stitch that down. And with those hems sewn, we can move on to attaching the two bodice pieces to each other at the side seams. So I'm placing my fabric with the right sides together and matching up the side seams and pinning this down. Then I'll sew it down with a half an inch seam allowance and serge off any excess fabric.
So now we have this tube of fabric and we can move on to the fun part, which is the shearing. So I'm going to start with a row of shearing that is about a quarter of an inch away from the hem and then move on to rows that are about two inches apart. So I am setting up my sewing machine for shearing by threading my bobbin with some elastic thread and then I am ready to go. As you're sewing your rows of shearing, you'll probably notice that the first row is not gathered quite as much, but as you go, it will gather more and more as you add more rows. For the first few rows, I'll be sewing on the front and back pieces separately because that underarm dips down. But once I get to that point on the shirt, I can start sewing in a continuous loop. You can sew as many or as few rows as you want to. I ended up doing 12 rows of shearing and I really like how this looks. Next, I turned the shirt to the wrong side and used steam from my iron, which helps the shearing to gather up even just a little bit more. Next, moving on to the sleeves, I'm going to start by sewing the side seams on the sleeves. So I'm taking each sleeve piece and matching up those long sides, and then I'll sew this down with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance just because that's what the pattern has allotted for, and then use my serger to finish off the edge. While I'm at the serger, I'm going to go ahead and run a row of serging along the bottom of the sleeve to get it ready to hem. To hem the sleeves, I'm going to follow the same process that I did for the top of the bodice and just fold the serging under, pin it down, and top stitch it. After hemming the sleeves, I'm going to switch back to my shearing elastic in the bobbin, and I'm going to run a row of shearing elastic along the cuff of the sleeve. So I'm going to match my sleeve edge up with this metal plate on my sewing machine just because that gives enough space for a nice ruffle and helps me keep a nice straight line. And after using some steam from my iron to shrink that elastic up a little bit more, here is what the ruffle looked like. So next, moving on to the top of the sleeve, I am pinning some twill tape. I should have been using bias tape here because that would have worked a lot better, but I had this on hand and wanted to use it up. So I am pinning this along the top edge of the sleeve from where one part of the underarm ends to where the other part of the underarm begins. It's marked on the pattern, um, but we're just leaving that space for the underarm to be able to sew that to the shirt. So I'm pinning this on and then I'm going to sew it down with a quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Thank you. 
to create a casing for our elastic, we're going to turn this tape towards the inside of the sleeve and pin it down and top stitch it down. Now I'm going to use a little bit of steam from my iron just to help this fold over, but I will be careful not to touch it to the actual fibers of the velvet. Next, I'm just sewing this down, making sure that there's enough space for my elastic to go through the casing. I did decide to sew this on the wrong side of the fabric. Normally, I would top stitch it, but because this tape was a little bit difficult to work with, I sewed it from the inside to make sure I could control what was happening. I have cut my elastic and I'm going to add this to the sleeves by threading it through the casing. If you're wondering how much elastic to use and you don't have the pattern, I would recommend trying on the top without the sleeves and then measuring up across your shoulder to see what feels comfortable and whatever that measurement is you can use to cut your elastic. My elastic is threaded through. I'm just going to use a couple of pins to hold it in place and then adjust it so it looks really nice and even. So now our sleeves are finished and we can add them to the shirt. So I'm going to start by opening up my shirt so that I can see that underarm shape. And then I'm going to match up the side seam of the sleeve with the side seam of the shirt. Then I'm just going to pin this into the underarm and sew it down with a one half an inch seam allowance. And then after using the serger to finish the underarm edge, the last thing I have to do is to hem the shirt. So I'm going to start once again by using my serger and running that all along the bottom of the fabric. You can see my fabric was a little bit crooked in the way I cut it, so I used my serger to kind of even it out here. Then I'm just going to turn this under just like I did with my previous hems and then sew it down with a straight stitch. So here is a look at how this shirt turned out. I think it's the perfect thing for this time of year before spring starts when it's still chilly, but I want to wear spring colors. So I'm really pleased with how it turned out and I hope you guys enjoyed seeing it. Right, guys that is going to be it for today's video I really hope you enjoyed watching and enjoyed seeing the shirt come together I think the silk velvet fabric was really tricky for me to work with because it slid around a lot but I really liked the finished product and I felt like by the time I got to the end of sewing it I was getting a little bit more comfortable with the fabric so that was a good thing and I absolutely love the color of this shirt and it's fun to have something that's a little bit more girly but still winter appropriate in my wardrobe so I'm really excited about this piece and I hope you enjoyed watching as well thank you guys so much for 
for watching and hanging out on my channel today. If you are not already subscribed, you can go ahead and do that now by clicking the red button down below and that will allow you to stay tuned for all of my future videos. And if you're not following me over on Instagram or TikTok, my username is the same on both platforms and I will put it up here. But thank you guys so much for watching again and I will see you in my next video. Bye.